Today, we'll be going over the differences between working in cybersecurity and working in software engineering. First off, how easy was it to find a job? So I'll start off with my job search process for my previous role as a security analyst because I think that's the most relevant. This was last year, February 2022, during the height of all the news of tech layoffs and tech recession and stuff like that. So it definitely wasn't the best job market. Um, obviously, when we were students, it was an easier job market for tech specifically. But at the time, I probably applied to 30 to 50 roles. And then I had probably five or six that I went through interviews for. And I got two or three offers from those. Yeah, I think it really depends on what you're applying for. But for me, I personally cast a really wide net. I applied to every cybersecurity analyst role. So it wasn't just cybersecurity analyst, it was SOC analyst, it was mm. junior pen testing roles. Any roles I thought would potentially be interesting to me, I applied for. So remember that it's just about casting a wide net because if you're looking specifically for a security analyst, and a security analyst may be doing the same thing as an SOC analyst. So sometimes the titles are just like that and it depends on the company obviously at the time i was also applying for software engineering roles since that was originally what i wanted to do when i was in college um and i ended up getting one security engineering offer but i ended up not taking it because the role would have been in person eventually i would say overall that whole process it was over like months at a time because at the time i was still in my previous role and thinking about switching over so i wasn't interviewing intensely until about a month and a half in so i would say my entire interview search or job search process was about two and a half months I would say. So first of all like we were definitely lucky when I graduated college tech was still in like the golden era and all the companies were aggressively hiring. Fortunately enough I got a lot of interview because of that and the interviewing process wasn't easy for sure like at the time I didn't study a lot of lead code and the interview process was a nuance to me as well. So it definitely took a lot of effort and I was fortunate enough that out of the 50 company I applied, I got accepted by like two or three of them and one of them was Google. So that's definitely to shine some light, like this process wasn't easy even when the time was good. So I would say the entire job process for me at the time was pretty much like three to five months. Like you would first apply, wait to hear back, go through one round of phone interview and then if you pass, you go to the second round and then the final round. Of course, in between them, like you have a waiting period and then they bring you on campus. And then after the interview, that's when the wait kicks in. Like sometimes it takes like month for them to even get back to you. So like it's definitely a lot of stress and then not knowing like if you got accepted or not for a quite a while. What was the interview process like and prep? Personally, I think for cybersecurity interviews, a lot of the material, especially for entry level, is gonna be very broad. So I recommend starting with something like the CompTIA Security Plus exam study guide. And there's actually a free doc I can link down below, but it's made by CompTIA and basically is like a vocab list of all of the material covered in the exam. And that list was actually what I studied when I was going through my security interviews because especially for entry level, like they can ask you any question from encryption to IAM to I don't know, digital forensics, there's so many different areas they can go into and the questions are really broad and you can't necessarily prepare or you can't necessarily prepare for one specific area in depth because they may not ask you a question about networking. I would just study as broadly as you can. And then there's also a lot of cybersecurity like prep interview questions online that you can find. Top 100 cybersecurity interviews, top 50 cybersecurity interviews. There's a lot of lists like that out there and that will probably give you an idea of what types of questions to expect. And I found that really helpful when I was just getting started. And overall, I think if you already took your security plus, it would be a little bit easier since you know the material. But while you're preparing for those interviews, it can be helpful if you're already planning on getting a certification to study for your security plus while simultaneously preparing for cybersecurity interviews and applying to jobs. Because mm -hmm. then everything will line up once you get yeah. your certification. You'll kind of be off to the races when you officially start applying because you already have your cert and you'll have that fresh memory of the information that you've learned from the exam. I think I think that's actually a very good point like to follow up with that i think one of the best thing you can do is to actually batch all your applications and interviews and one thing to remember like for the jobs that you care about the most you should try to do it at a later stage because like when if you go in blind like that's your first interview like it's going to be very nervous like you have mm -hmm. so much you feel like you have so much to lose because this is like your dream job for example but you should ease into it and try to get yourself into this interviewing rhythm and as you interview more and more you're also going to build more confidence and get your head in this type of setting and you become better off 
later on. So I would say like definitely try to do as many interviews as possible, apply to as many jobs as possible. This way we will make the later ones that much easier. And especially if you want to go into the big tech or something like, don't start out with them and trying to ease into it once you are fully ready. So I would say that's advice that many people don't realize. A lot of these interviews are very similar. I feel like many people don't realize is the fact that for example, cybersecurity, like your interview might be very different, but within that niche, it's kind of similar for different levels. So I feel like preparing for a lot of them at the same time, it's a win-win. I have done both interviewing side and interviewer side. So I know like being on top of your game is definitely the most important. What I mean by that, have like a good rest before the interview day. Cause when you are on site or even doing a phone interview, like being as sharp as possible is actually very important. I remember a lot of the interview, like I'd stayed up the night before trying to study and then my mind was just going blank, like something really simple. I just took me a lot longer to get to the resolution. And that's not a good showing. So I would say definitely like don't study too hard the night before because like it might only hinder you. And overall for me, studying is kind of like practicing deco type of questions, trying to study up all the data structures. And over the years, like I think the blueprint for getting a software engineering role has become more laid out, like, oh, do some medium hard decode type of questions and practice, practice, practice. And I do think those will help. And a lot of times, especially if you interview, the interviewer, most of them want you to succeed. So definitely trying to listen to what they have to say. Like sometimes they're trying to help you so you don't go down a rabbit hole, for example. Like I try to provide hints, but sometimes they, interviewee might be too deep in their train of thoughts and ignore some of these like so yeah that's what i would say is some of my advice and preparation guide so in terms of interview structure i think for the most part all of my interviews for cyber security roles had about two to three rounds and usually the first one is behavioral um and maybe with someone on your team and maybe a potential manager or someone senior and the next one is more technical so this one is usually where they ask you those cybersecurity questions that are very general, like how would you secure XYZ? Um, what is this protocol? Things like that. And then there's more security design focused questions that are broader and have you like share a screen or design a system or mm -hmm. share your thought process about like how you would implement a certain tool or like what considerations you have about a certain thing. Picking your brain about the steps that you would do and how far you would you can think or like share about a specific project or a specific problem that they're bringing up to you. Usually it's some kind of general cybersecurity project, like how you would secure a network, what would you do if malware infects a machine, things like that. Just very general things where you can go as deep as you can or as wide as you want. Those are one of like the trickier questions because you may not know like what exactly the interviewer is looking for, but you want to be as obviously as detailed as you can in, in the advice that you do give or in the answers that you do provide. So. Those are probably the three main types of questions that you'll see during interviews. Mm -hmm. And at most, I've seen like two to three, but if you have four rounds of interviews, I do think that's definitely on the higher side. Yeah, it sounds a lot like case study works that you could do, like yeah. follow up questions and stuff. I think that's like a key difference between cybersecurity interview versus like software engineering interviews. Unless you get to more of the senior level roles where you start doing like system design or product design. So yeah, for software engineer, it really depends on the company, but typically it's at least like two to three rounds before you get to the on-site interview. And the two to three rounds is mostly phone interviews and then the take-home assignments. The take-home assignment is more common for entry levels and mid-level roles, like where they send you a challenge, they expect you to solve it just, just so they know you know how to code. And then the phone rounds depends on your performance. Sometimes they want more indicators. They want more people to interview you first before they bring you on site. And when you are on site, it can range from anywhere between four to five interviews. And depending on level, like one of them might be system design, one of them might be behavioral. And if you're extremely senior, then more can be system design, but mostly for entry level, mid level, it will be deco style question where they give you a prompt. It's either focusing on data structure, algorithm, or something that they find very relevant. And then you spend the time solving it. So I would say like, Liko is definitely almost your best friend as long as you want to succeed in these interviews. I think one thing to note is the fact that the material they cover during your interview may not directly reflect the work that you're doing on the job. And I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions that people have because a lot of times cybersecurity interviews or you know tech 
job interviews in general can be very technical and that's not something that you see in a lot of other sectors and you may think that you know after maybe doing like three or four interviews and you get rejections you may feel that this may not be the feel for you and I want to say that's not true because a lot of times these interviews have material that you know it or you don't and it's not really something in your control if the interviewer asks you a question that's out of left field and you know you may not have ever expected this question or it's too advanced for an entry-level mm -hmm. role and nowadays for a lot of entry-level roles or entry-level roles they're not as entry-level as they sound and may require five to seven years of experience <laughs> or yeah. like a master's or a phd or something and yeah, I think the job market in general, especially for tech roles, is becoming very, I don't know, highly competitive in a way that definitely benefits employers, but hurts candidates who are just starting their careers in cybersecurity or in software engineering and may not even be able to get their foot in the door because of these high bars that companies have set, even while they are, you know, not having enough talent in specific areas in tech. A lot of times, these interviews don't reflect your day-to-day -day jobs. And to me, like, it, sometimes it feels like, oh, so it seems as long as I can pass this interview, as long as I get a chance to get this interview, like, all I really need to do is to practice LECO every day. Like, yeah. that, that feels, like, you know, wrong, because, like, LECO doesn't reflect day-to-day -day job. It's more of, like, a competitive coding aspect. And day-to-day -day job is more so than solving LECO problem. It's, like, ambiguity, like, how you can actually implement features from end-to-end -end without any prompts that's the reality and unfortunately like most bigger mid-sized company they use standardized leco style questions because like that's probably the easiest way to filter out candidates and unfortunately that's the reality yeah i will say that the questions i got asked during my cybersecurity interviews i didn't touch most of those topics during my job working as a security analyst so there's definitely a big disconnect between the interviews and the job that you're doing on hand. So as our last topic, we can go a little bit deeper into what our actual day-to-days did look like. For me, like, there's really busy times where I would be working like 60, 70 hours. Like, it would literally be like 996 if you don't know the phrase. Like, I would be working the moment I wake up and then work until I sleep. Of course, it's not the whole amount. I still go eat and then do some other stuff. But majority of the day is spent on doing coding like writing code trying to debug issues and many people don't realize like a lot of times i am debugging debugging actually takes a big amount of time in a developer's career like you don't realize until you start writing these real features that you try to figure out what could account wrong like why isn't something working like that come up so often no one writes perfect code the first time like or the second time like and uh, of course like i also have quieter weeks where I don't work nearly as intensely and for those days like you know I will be writing like design docs fixing like bugs fixing issues and it's a lot more relaxed but overall like a lot has to do with coding debugging writing documentation I would say for a typical day when I worked as a security analyst either troubleshooting some vulnerability reports or security reports that I get we have automated processes so they get sent to me on a daily basis and I have to review those and make sure nothing went wrong or like you know, tests failed. And then if they did, I have to figure out what went wrong and then rerun them and basically go from there. And then <laughs> I also have a, or my team has a security ticketing queue. So any security requests that come from external stakeholders, other teams, customers, we manage all that and basically have like our own tickets that we manage or that we take on. All those requests can look very different. It could be a vulnerability report, it could be a client request it could be user has some kind of security finding so it could be a variety of things but we kind of just deal with it as we go and then if it's something that needs to be escalated or brought up to our manager then we usually bring it up during team calls and have them up for discussion so there's definitely a lot of unique cases that come in especially um, at my previous role so because we kind of had like the external user base and our actual customers we kind of dealt with both sides of that as well as of course our internal teams on top of that we had regular meetings i would say meetings took up a lot less of my time compared to the role i had previously um, in a fintech company but um, i probably had on average about two hours maybe two to three hours of meetings a day and that i think is pretty good for someone at my level at an analyst level yeah i would say for for us it's about like the same like eight to ten hours a week um meetings and uh includes stand-up like cross-functional team sync 
uh, one on one with manager, one on one with like tech leads, stuff like that, and uh, other ad hoc meetings. All right, so hopefully this video gave me an idea of the entire interview process, job search process for cybersecurity versus software engineering, mm -hmm. as well as a glimpse into what our actual work looks like mm -hmm. um, compared to like what the material you'll see during an interview. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below, and I'll try to investigate back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to follow Luca on his channel. I'll link it down below as well. He makes software engineering content. And if you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. And I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.